Should we start small or should we go for the whole enchilada all at once? Well, obviously eventually we're going to need a truck, but I think we can start right now by going out, catching a bird, building a chamber and seeing if it weighs the same when the bird is sitting in it as opposed to when the bird is flying in it. Okay, well I got some pretty sensitive scales downstairs and I can probably dig up a net somewhere. Let's do it. All right. For this myth to take flight, our dynamic duo have to land some pigeons. And in a scene straight from Hitchcock, the birds appear from nowhere. Pigeon whisperer Adam and accomplice Jamie use a variety of snares, nets, and snacks. <laughs> the birds will be too fat to fly. <laughs> but their pigeon stalking comes to zero, and they realize they need some help. Enter Kate Martin, pigeon wrangler. Brought you some pigeons. Awesome. Come on, you guys. Two pigeons in an official pigeon carrier. Look at that. Finally, Adam's all pigeoned up and ready to begin small-scale testing. A clear plastic chamber will double up as a truck trailer. And when activated, a vibrating floor will encourage the pigeons to take flight. But this is your gig, Adam. Why don't you take us through it? I've got my bird flying chamber here. It's got a closed top. The bottom is a screen, which I can vibrate by plugging into this battery. The whole thing is standing on top of a very sensitive scale. First thing I'm going to do is turn on the scale, which will zero it out. Then I'm going to put the birds in. I'm going to see the birds weigh a certain amount. Then I'm going to turn on the platform, which will vibrate. Hopefully, they'll fly around, and we'll see if there's any difference. So if the myth is true, when the pigeon gets some air, the combined weight of the chamber and bird will come down. Sounds simple. Fly, fly, that's it, come on, fly. Come on, take off, take off, take off. Now there's your problem. The bird just ain't flying. I don't blame him, I mean, because it's not like. He can like, barely get a full wingspan in there. Yeah, you know, he's running into the sides. Maybe we need to build a bigger chamber. So plan B is a bigger chamber and better motivation to fly than a vibrating floor. What have you got, Jamie? My current favorite is thinking about setting up a weed whacker like affair. And we could put like a half a dozen motors right. so that there's just a, it's just kind of whizzing around. I mean, I can't imagine this would hurt them. I mean, you could, it, it doesn't hurt you, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> For our animal-loving viewers, let's be clear, Adam's pain threshold is way below the pigeons. So if Adam's okay, the bird will be too. All right, so if you haven't been paying attention, my first attempt at the small-scale pigeon experiment did not work because the chamber was too small and the pigeon didn't want to fly. I have fixed those problems. I believe I'm gonna hang this, use a different pigeon annoying technique, and I'm using a bigger tank so he can actually fly around. I feel like calling this guy Jackson for some reason. Now, I have a nephew whose name is Jackson, and I have another nephew whose middle name is Jackson. He doesn't remind me of either of them. Okay, Jackson, you're up. Now remember, all you gotta do is what you were born to do, fly. <laughs> Break me out, but it's not doing anything to him. Come on, come on, come on, Jackson, come on, come on, come on. Boom. Uh, that's pigeon for a fly. It's also desperate because if they can't get Jackson to take off and stay airborne, this myth is grounded. Okay, guys, check this out. I found it on the internet. Whoa. Is that photoshopped? Apparently not. And supposedly, the boat hit the channel marker at 25 miles per hour. Seriously? That split up the middle, like, what, 15 feet? 17 feet, actually. Ha, <laughs> you know what I see in our near future? Yeah, crashing, crashing boats. boats. Absolutely. This tall tale of hijinks on the high seas has two halves, literally. We know it happened because it's been well documented, but the myth is in the details. Apparently, in this watery fender bender, the boat bifurcation occurred at 25 miles per hour. Fact? or has someone got their facts bent out of shape? So what's the plan? All right, this is what we do. We rent one of these speedboats, we take some insurance out, and we crash it into a channel marker. And we tell them we're going 25 miles an hour. Exactly. <laughs> 